Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown. And this breakdown is with Jeff Lawson, Jeff Ippon Lawson from Polaris 4. Jeff trains out of Ippon Gym in Bournemouth and he is well known for his high level judo and jiu jitsu. Guys, um, this is a two part breakdown. So to get the second part, make sure you subscribe. But what I want to um, just say in this part is that um, Jeff is sponsored by Tatami and Scramble. Um, I split the video, so he thanks his sponsors at the end of the second breakdown. Uh, thanks to Polaris for letting me use the footage. I really appreciate it. And thanks to Jeff. Um, this breakdown is Dana her level um, detail. Jeff goes into so much. There's about 25 minutes of a 10 second sequence. Um, enjoy. That's it. So Jeff, we're recording. Um, two matches. And as I was just saying, I'm like super excited for this. I think this is, um, this was definitely a viral video. This first, it did, didn't it? it did go viral, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm always trying to get my left hand on initially to gauge the, the range of uh, keep the distance. You know, I always like to get my left hand on, and but that's from my uh MMA days, the, the jab. You notice I'm uh, I had my left leg forward at the initial there. Yeah. Um, I always, that's my, my stance and that's come over from mixed martial arts because initially I was um, more MMA than I was jiu-jitsu. Um, I just used the jiu-jitsu years and years ago to, to, for sparring because they were good, really, really good on the ground, whereas the judo guys weren't as great. And um, it was extra, yeah, it was extra sort of sparring and, and learning, you know, for, the, for the, the MMA game. So I still keep that MMA stance. I keep my hands up. I always put my left jab, put my left hand out first, um, either to tie up, as we see in this picture here, Paul has give, now given me an opening for my right hand by holding my left hand. Opening so now, where? So you can see... Um, we're hand to hand, yeah? Mm -hmm. So my left hand is in Paul's right hand because he's, he's gripped that, he's stopped that, you know, and that, that's it there. So now that's given me a very quick sort of punching through grip with the right hand. So if you, if you watch as it, as it goes, I don't know if it's this bit, I think it is this bit, yeah. So he's, he's given me a space, basically. He's tied that up. And I can get that. There's the grip that I'm after there. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm going to send it really slow to be honest. Yeah. So there's the grip on there's the grip. Cool. If you hold that there now, now at this point, because you don't have a grip of my gi with my, my left hat on my left side. Okay. He's made that free for me to continue the rotation. Okay. So, so you because see your shoulder is free now. Yes. Yeah. My shoulder is free, but also um, my entire uh, left side is free. Okay. So the the what I've done here is my my right hand is coming kind of on the inside, almost over the top on the on the lapel, and now I learnt that. Um, and that's the one that I practiced from, uh, I wasn't taught it directly. I've, I've, ne I've never met the guy, but there was a, uh, judo guy. who was an absolute Sianagi phenomenon, um, called, uh, Toshigo Koga. Yes. I heard of Koga and Koga yeah. used to do his Sianagis like that. He would get the collar or he would get a really good grip in the armpit. Mm. And, um, which is awful. Gave, yeah. Yeah. And that gave him a really, um, a powerful wind and turn with the kazushi, the break, the grip, the, the balance break. Mm -hmm. So 
that also enables me to um you see as we go a bit sort of pinch the arm to the body in a second so so if you wind it slow forward okay so there okay if you go back we're looking uh, lots of things happen at once in this position lots and lots and lots so if you take into consideration okay i've got to get my feet my hips and my shoulders and his balance at the same time all working at the same time so foot feet, hip, hips shoulder. shoulders and, and his balance <laughs> yeah because you need him coming in that direction don't you so yes he, so he's on his toes okay now here's another thing about the um the way that i i stand as you can see i've switched my stance now okay and that's only to um, make him walk on to me. So my legs have gone slightly wider. Okay, I've kept a nice uh, wide balance there. And as he walks towards me, you'll see I move my left foot towards his left foot. So back into that MMA stance. So just put it forward a frame. Okay. So. One second. Oh. But it's a small step with the right tiny just to, just to stay like i'm um mirroring his stance ready there look okay now in a second there's a tiny step with the right so a little bit further forward on the frame there so there's the tiny step with the right okay now this is important because what that does is it gives me a um a pulling point so now if you look at my right shoulder yeah and my right leg okay what that's done is given me a momentary balance so you've okay, got that's, a straight line here yes so what that is is that is like a launch pad for me okay now again this is all happening super quick um so if you go forward again, what happens now is I step really deep, which is another Koga um, thing. There. So, what's happened now is from my balance step, okay, uh, can you go uh, really slow back and then really, yeah, really slow forward again? Sorry. So, if you watch, do you know, um, I don't know the name for this, so I just call it like a Newton step. You know Newton's cradle. Newton's cradle, yeah. Yes, Newton's cradle. So if you watch this this penetration step, okay, if we go back, so there's my balanced foot on my right leg. Okay. Forget the arms for a minute because we're looking at the feet now. Ready? So you go, it goes right leg, hits to left, and then the left is in super deep. Ready? There. Okay. Just go back a frame. There. So that's where you see where my foot's going. My left foot mm -hmm. is going directly beneath, uh, directly in between his legs, and really deep. Uh, my knee is bent. You see, mm -hmm. as I'm as I'm firing it through. So. At this point, now you can see that I've started to really wind my, my shoulders and my hips in. And that's all from that, that right leg. That right leg initial sort of uh, step that I had. And now that Newton step has thrown my right leg into my left leg, which has gone super deep. And now you watch as Paul goes up. Um, watch my um, this so this is a really important position here this is almost throw active if I did no more on there Paul would just jump around the side he'd continue around to his left and, and he'd stay balanced but the difference is now okay the, 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 the tiny detail of this and this stops a lot of throws and because you've done judo as well Paul you're You'll, you'll understand this. 
Now, if my right leg was to stay in that position, I wouldn't have the throw. It wouldn't yeah. happen. It would just, um, yeah. my right leg would stop the entire movement. So the weight is still balanced uh, yeah. on my right leg. So there. Okay. My left leg's still active. My right leg is taking every single bit of my weight. Now, the, at the moment my left leg hits solid ground, I transfer my weight from my right to my left. Okay, if you go forward, you'll see. Okay. There. Yeah. Okay, so now um, my left leg is fully planted. Well, the heel's up slightly. But again, if I don't put my right leg back, you watch. There. There. Now watch the right leg. Ready? There yeah. you go. So that tiny step back for that right leg, tiny, tiny step back, is the is that's where the balance really really disappears for him but that helps my forward momentum with the throw <laughs> we've transitioned from judo to jiu-jitsu <laughs> so if we take it take it back now i can now go through the arms for you yeah oh okay you want to go all the way I say yeah, all the way. It's if, like... if we can go, if we can go just back, and then I can give you the arm, the arm bit. So there and there, that's perfect. So now I'm, like I say, I'm blocking Paul's right hand. Okay, I give that a little throw, literally a little throw away, and that with all the leg and hip and shoulder movement, um, it gives me an entrance underneath Paul's left arm. Now, what you don't see in this position is the, the pull that I'm doing. So my uh, palms almost rotated inwards, almost rotated down on my right hand. Mm -hmm. And my, my right elbow is, you know, hopefully coming up to the ceiling as far as possible so, just to bring them up onto their toes. Okay? Okay. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, stop. Go. <laughs> Let's go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. A little bit. Stop. Okay. So this point here, which we went over, this is, this is the center of that Newton step that we did. Now, my left arm, a lot of people miss this because they have their grip on the outside of the arm and it, and it doesn't, you can't create that lock quite so well. And what I mean by the lock is, is, as I'm pulling Paul's gi up with my right arm, basically I've done an uppercut into Paul's armpit. Okay, I've thrown my thumb, my left thumb, towards um, Paul's head. Okay, so I've done a powerful uppercut um, on the bicep and the forearm only. Right, so if you can imagine in your own arm, if you flex your own arm and you've got your bicep and it's now close to your forearm, that's the only part that I'm getting into his arm. This is Ippon Sienaghi's a one arm shoulder throw. Uh, and it's his shoulder that I'm using. I'm trapping his shoulder. Um, and it's a common mistake of people putting their own shoulder yeah. in, but it's not, it's an uppercut. And at this point here, it's so fast. Um, I'm, all of my pulling is going up, 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 and I've punched my uppercut in under his armpit and thrown my thumb back towards his head because now what happens is as I continue to pull, his gi is now being pulled downwards. So if you move forward. Okay. So um... there's a lot on this. One little bit. Stop. So now his, I, his arm's on my body. It's part of my body. It's wrapped towards my body because I'm now pulling his collar into my body you know right my arm my thumb i don't know if that is my thumb or not i can't see uh, my thumb yes it is that yeah my thumb pointed towards his head so okay, that's, your yeah, that's thumb what, is there yeah and that's what that's doing is is i'm forcing that back towards his head 
So then I've got that tension between his gi and his armpit that I'm stretching so to give me more control of the throw. Um, a, two guys showed me that. Um, Tony Sweeney, in, who's one of the old Budokai coaches, and there was a, a, a guy called Eric Bonte. He was a fantastic judoka in, from the Budokai as well. And he, and he sort of, I watched him doing this as well. And he sort of did, did it with me for a little bit, not too much. but um, And I just practiced and practiced and practiced. That uppercut, thumb back, pull the gi down. Uppercut, thumb. And, it, you know, that really, really works. It lifts um, his elbow up as well, right? So, like, bring yeah. him onto his toes. Yeah, that's that's that initial that initial pull at the centre of the Newton step. Um, that's when that elbow's coming up. I, I anyway. So mm. now uh, it's a it's a it's a at this point you see this point here. Mm -hmm. At this point, Paul knew the 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 throw was was coming. <laughs> I he think knew everyone in the room did. <laughs> <laughs> at this point. <laughs> oh, every, like, everyone that starts judo is this is a oh shit moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh man, they just—I mean, that's judo guys. That's our bread and butter, you know. Doing stuff like that, you know, we're not typically we're not so great on the ground, but um, uh, with the with the throws, you know, that's we're great with those. This is the thing with with the way that this throws executed um you could do this throw over your head like like they do okay so you know the um ju the jujitsu self-defense stuff the rear naked choke defense yeah right the rear naked choke defense um but they put it behind your neck you know it works don't get me wrong it does work you do it to someone like that you drop your hips you pull forward they go over your head don't they with this type of throw and with the direction of the hands that i've done as well by throwing the hand back and pulling the gi down um you, you drop them off the side which i think i think is really important and you but as you drop them off you know you offload them off the side i it, you know pull both of paul's feet off the ground here um and that's a really important thing that you, you've sort of said there. And I've practiced that for years, dropping off the side. You know, the Uchikomi that we used to do, uh, we used to do it down the mat. But when I got my guys to the mat, for the throw practice, sorry, Uchikomi's throw practice, for those who don't know, um, I used to get them on, so the crash mat would be sort of in a line from where sort of Nick's feet are, you know, you'll see anyway from yeah. where the rest's feet are. Um, I, so I don't drop him over my head. I drop him, you he's know, not, to the side. He's not coming that way. No, yeah, I drop him off to the yeah, side. Yeah, he's going over this direction. And that yeah, so, yeah, thing. yeah. You see where I'm looking? Uh huh. So that's yeah. where he's going. This is this is a toss up, <laughs> right? You reckon it's going the other way? I I think he's going there. Go on. Okay. Right. Let's wind it forward. I think he lands on the line. So let's do it in slow. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so right underneath, you see how he, he really went to the side. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This is a good picture as well because both of my feet are off the mat. Maybe my big toe's on there, but no, I definitely... Off. I think it's off. Is it? I, so he's taking the full weight of his body and my body into the mat so that's what made that really effective as well this is the definition of hitting somebody with the world yes yeah there's those t-shirts isn't there <laughs> yeah yeah but that's why it works so well it works so so well in um you know fair play to him he stood up with me and same with the next one we're going to do with with andy you know he stood up he was game for it but and you've okay, still... look at the collar grip the collar grip didn't change from the point of the entry to the throw onto the ground. The collar grip didn't change. Okay. And then there's a big shovel there, isn't there, to put him onto yeah. the right. Yeah. yeah. 
Now that that what I did there was um, was totally unconscious, okay? Um, because you know I didn't even realise I was lifting him up at that point, okay? And then um, in my club, um, I've this is another move that I've drilled and drilled and drilled. Obviously, you know the I've done the the armbar, the Juju Katami for for 30 years you know like that's that's the only, one of the only things i ever really won judo matches with and my mma matches with was the 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 arm lock the arm bar um so you know so it's, it's really in my pattern of moving um is and i teach this all the time all the time is like a floating knee slice which you'll see in a second into the underhook i, I suppose it's a version of a Sao Paulo pass, but when the, when the guard is open. So I pulled him up. Paul's reaction is he doesn't want to give my, give, he doesn't want to turtle and he doesn't want to give uh, his back at all to me. So if you watch his reaction here. So if I actually. So he does perfect. So now look, there's my uh, knee slice. And I'm now, I've now got the underhook. You'll see. It's only a hand at the moment. So you've got the knee slice. There. There's a switch just there, which yeah. is really interesting because normally there's a fight for that underhook. Yeah. It'll stop a person passing. Yeah. But you're essentially not getting the full underhook until they feel like they have turned. Yeah, all that unhook was is me keeping my elbow low and Paul, Paul, at this point here, Paul's still rolling towards me. Look, he's still rolling towards me because he doesn't want to give Turtle up. Don't forget that um, I only know this because, um, uh, what's the guy um, that does the, the breakdowns? Another guy does the breakdowns. There's... Uh... Rory BJJ Van... Scout. BJJ Scout. Yeah, I'm not on that level, mate. I'm not there. Um, he he did he he tweeted my match, and from the moment me getting the grip to me finishing it here it was only ten seconds. Yeah. So this whole breakdown we're doing now is quite it's quite long actually. Finish. So so, so it, in that last sequence, it's pretty simple. It's a lift to encourage. Or create so there's, there's from that um, that lift that initial lift. If you wind it all the way back, Paul. Okay, so yeah, there. So and a little bit further back, a little bit further, 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 a little bit further. So the important thing here is I've kept my grip. That's my initial throwing grip there with my right with my right arm so as i uh, my knees barely touch the ground and i stand up i'm lifting pull up to either expose his back which is ideal or to create this reaction and this reaction pulls done absolutely perfectly for him and for me you see he's posted on his right arm He's thrown his hips out, you see? So Paul's yeah. posted on his right arm, which is what we're all taught, taught to do. Post your hips out, square them up um, to face your partner in open guard. Yeah. So that's what he's done. I've seen yes. that, and this is where my floating pass comes in, like the Sao Paulo, really open Sao Paulo, ready. I don't let him hook my ankle. I keep it close to my ass. And now my knee hits the ground. At this point, two things have happened. I've hit the ground, I've blocked his head, and I'm working my hand into that underhook position. Okay. So, got there. It was from there. Yep. Straight to there. You see how deep the arm is now? Mm. For both of us. And then. So towards the end there, there's a, um, if you go back a little bit, 
But again, for the jiu-jitsu guys that are watching, you know, this is basic stuff. This is, you know, basic, basic movements. You know, uh, there's the far side arm bar. Yeah, but there's basic movements done perfectly, you know, done really well. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, this is the point. So now my entire weight, look where my head is. My head's kind of over where Paul's head is now because all of the left side of my body is pressed down on his face, his jaw, his head, his nose, his face, all of it. And what that does is that enables me to slide my right leg really simple, you know, just across his waistline, maybe over the top of his knees. Let's have a look. To clamp in underneath the armpit there. There. Yeah. And that's it. Jobs are good. And <laughs> that's it. Okay. So, um, it's in, the other thing as well, is which, you, which you'll probably see from the um, Andy Roberts fight as well, is um, the moment you get that underhook and the moment you're, you're committed to the arm lock is I'm trying to straighten that instantly. I'm not trying to grip strip. I'm not trying to uh, waste too much time on letting them settle. That arm is coming with my body. That's the important thing. So when you get that underhook and you get their arm, you, you should always be pulling it into your chest as you move not move hold okay grip strip which some people do really effectively but um that's the way that i do it is is i'm trying to straighten that arm before they can even defend yeah yeah and you do you do that by um by keeping it close to your body 